Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Friday that his deployment of tactical nuclear weapons to close ally Belarus was a warning to the West about arming and supporting Ukraine. Speaking at Russia's flagship economic forum in St. Petersburg, Putin confirmed for the first time that nuclear warheads had already been delivered. He added that this was only the first batch and all deliveries will be completed by the end of the summer or by the end of the year. He stressed, however, that he saw no need for Russia to resort to nuclear weapons for now. This is also Moscow's first deployment of such warheads outside of Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko, a staunch ally of Putin, said late on Tuesday his country had started taking delivery of Russian tactical nuclear weapons that included some three times more powerful than the atomic bombs the U.S. dropped on Japan in 1945. The United States has criticized Putin's decision, but has said it has no intention of altering its own stance on strategic nuclear weapons. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said it has not seen any signs that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. We'll continue to monitor the situation very closely and and very carefully. We have no reason to adjust our own nuclear posture. Uh, We don't see any indications that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. uh, Putin said the West was doing everything it could to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia in Ukraine. He added that talks with the West to reduce Russia's vast nuclear arsenal were a non-starter. All right, Shalawa. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Tiahawa, Bahashim, Yahweshai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. While that is true from, and I'd like to say, peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect and you know yet again it's june 19th so-called juneteenth you know missile monday and as you can see you know vladimir putin has pretty much you know put nuclear missiles in Belarus as a warning to america you know and it says russia doesn't want to use you know nuclear missiles for now, but they will in a time to come because again, America, aka Babylon the Great, will be destroyed. So, you know, I'm just gonna bring out a few scriptures. Lord willing, this lesson is that a find straight to the point, you know, because what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, war is in the air right now. You know, Russia and Ukraine are still, you know, at war, but meanwhile, you know. World War Three is still wrapping up, you know. <clears throat> so I'm going to start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy and again. The smith being those scientists, you know, that created these nuclear missiles. You know, and the waster being the nuclear missiles themselves, you know, because again, ultimately, that's what the Lord is going to use, you know, to judge this place and the fire from, you know, the concentrated fire from the chariots as well, you know, because again, this is the way that America has to go out. The same way Sodom and Gomorrah went out by fire and brimstone, you know, but again, a lot of people. You know, the two-thirds of the nation of Israel, primarily, you know, they lost or they're celebrating, you know, their so-called independence. We're still slaves. You know, we're still slaves of butter, Esau, Edom. You know, we are not in our own land. You know, we still have to go to this man for one of all things. You know, like it says in the book of Deuteronomy 28, you know, we have to go to our enemy for the one of all things. You know, we still have to somewhat, you know, depend on this man's system, you know, in order to survive. But meanwhile, they're celebrating that, you know, this is what's taking place. 
This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 6, and it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And yes, you know, these things must come to pass, you know, otherwise, you know, we can't make it. And that's what we hope to do, you know, we hope to be, you know, the Lord's chosen to deliver us from the destruction that he is getting ready to bring upon this earth, you know, because again, those nuclear missiles, they're, they're, they're no joke, you know, they're going to burn hotter than the sun. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is that that's going to be a very horrible judgment, primarily for those that receive the mark of the beast and Esau Edom and the other nations that just happen to be over here, you know. It's going to be a very, very terrible time upon the earth. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 1. And it says, For behold, that day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day of the Lord shall come. like you and it says and that day cometh shall it's like you and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch and yes you know it's going to be absolutely devastating you know because again America is the most wickedest kingdom uh, in history you know and it has to be destroyed in order for it to be peace. You know, because otherwise, if not, Esau, Edom is ultimately, you know, going to destroy everyone and himself in the process. You know, no flesh will remain if the Lord didn't shorten these days. And I'm going to bring that out as well. But I'm going to go to the book of... <clears throat> Thank you. Thirty-eight. I'm going to start at verse two. I'm going to start at verse one. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-eight, and it says, "And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog." The land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army and horse and horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and it's lucky all of them handling swords. And you know, again, the Lord is pretty much putting that, you know, that old Soviet Union spirit back into, you know, Russia. You know, this is why he has Vladimir Putin doing the things that he's doing. Because ultimately he's going to use Russia to destroy America. Because, you know, World War III won't officially kick off until America and Russia, you know, are at, you know, a direct conflict with each other. You know, right now it's indirect. But again, at some point, you know, something is going to happen to where, you know, America and Russia are going to end up, you know, at war with each other because they're going to be the main two countries that are going to, you know, be at war. Of course, you have, you know, Russia and their allies and America and its allies, but ultimately, you know, all of, you know, these nations, even the nations that America have, you know, an alliance with, they're going to ultimately turn on her, you know, and shoot their missiles over here as well, you know.
This is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22. And it says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And yes, you know, and this is the reason why pretty much time has been sped up. You know, they said the earth is even spinning faster, you know, because the days, you know, are speeding up because we're coming into that time where Esau Edom is getting ready to be taken out of power, you know. You know, bring that out. Book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12, you know, because he knows his time is almost up. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 12. And therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And yes, Esau knows he has a short time to do what he needs to do. You know, the Lord is only going to let Esau get so far with his new world order before it ultimately takes him out. You know, I'm going to go to the book of Job because it, it expounds on it, you know. It's the book of Job, chapter 20. And I'm going to start it. Verse 22. And it says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh shall cast the fury upon. It's like he shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating and he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through it is drawn out and cometh out of the body yea the glittering sword cometh out of his gall terrors are upon him and yes ultimately Esau knows you know or at least the elites you know they know that America is going to be destroyed you know Hence the reason why they're going to hide, you know, in their bunkers or in their spaciousness or, or wherever, you know, they pretty much have, you know, shelter to take place, you know, from World War Three and when our Lord Yahweh Shai returns, you know, because they're going to try to hide. Is the book of Revelation, chapter 6. I'm going to start at 12, and it says, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed together, it's like and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings, it's like says, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks. And they said, it's lucky, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And yes, you know, that's ultimately what the elites are going to do. You know, they're going to run and hide, you know, because they know that once our Lord Yahweh Shai returns, it's over. You know, they're going to go into slavery. But ultimately, that's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to hide, you know, from him. Because they're going to be reserved from World War Three, you know, they won't be killed in a thermonuclear fire. You know, only the 
the lesser luminaries, you know, these, you know, lower level Edomites that are still left in America and the heathens and the two thirds, you know, they're all going to be destroyed, you know. But ultimately, like it says, who should be able to stand? Only the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be able to stand in that day, you know, because the Lord is going to deliver them and them only, you know, because again, the Lord is going to bring a great destruction upon this earth. And just like I said, it's going to be a great earthquake. Their earthquake is going to be caused by those missiles pelting America, you know, because it's going to lay this land flat. You know, you won't know where anything is. You won't remember, because this is the type of, you know, destruction that the Lord is going to bring upon this wicked land, you know. And even so, you know, this, the book of Isaiah 34 is pretty much describing you know, what's going to take place, you know, to America. This entire chapter is dedicated to, you know, the aftermath of when America is destroyed, you know. So I'm just going to bring out Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 11. And it says, But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it in the line of confusion, and the stones of emptiness, and yes, you know, the line of confusion being, you know, those state lines, you won't be able to tell where, you know, certain states were, because that's the type of destruction that the Lord is bringing, that's the type of devastation that those missiles are going to do to this land, this entire land is going to be engulfed in flames, you know, and then I'm going to end it on this. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 17. And I'm going to start at verse 14. And it says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And yes, that's going into... You know, America's allies ultimately turning on her, you know, and shooting their missiles over here, you know, <clears throat> because, you know, these other nations, you know, they pretty much, you know, took on the ways of America. But ultimately, you know, these other nations, they're going to be angry and they're going to help, you know, destroy this place by shooting their missiles over here as well. So I'm just going to end it on that. You know, another Missile Monday. As you can see, Vladimir Putin is, you know, still wrapping up his arsenal. You know, along with Kim Jong-un as well. And then I'm pretty sure China is also, you know. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Tiahua. Ba'a Shem Yahweh Shai. Ba'a Shem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give divine honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Well, I learned this truth from, and I like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. Until the next time I see you, Shalom.